Mapucho. Please be seated. The court is back in session. Before giving the floor to the Kia Sampan defense, the chamber uh, wishes to inform both the prosecution and the defense that due to a lack of interpretation resources, the parties will have to speak slowly to make sure that the proceedings are properly conducted. And now the chamber gives the floor to the Kiyosampan defense. Thank you, Mr. President. Good morning, Mr. Bensik. Let us resume where we stopped before we went on break. You confirmed that Ted Fock, head of the Barai district, was spoken about to you by cadres you knew. Do you know whether Un, the brother of Susun, the chief of Region 42, held meetings attended by Kepok, head of the Barai district, to your knowledge? Answer. At each meeting at the level of the sector, the head of the district was present. Vous-même, lorsque vous avez été secrétaire de When you yourself were deputy secretary of the district of Chankalu, did you attend meetings chaired by Un, the chief of region 42? Answer, yes. But I never attended those meetings with both. I attended meetings at which instructions were issued and work plans were distributed during meetings of the standing committee of the district. Meetings of the standing committee of the district were only attended by district chiefs. Council, with the authorization of the president, may I give the first page of the statement of witness to TCW 850, and it is E3 slash 5293. This would enable me to refer to the contents of that statement without giving names in public. May I request the court officer to show the first page of this statement to the witness, clearly indicating to him that I would like to put questions to him after he reads the contents of that statement, and I would ask him not to give the name of the witness in question. Present, President, please proceed. Council, witness, I'm showing you the first page of the statement I'd like you to comment on, and I'll put questions to you on that page regarding the fact that this witness has already appeared before this chamber. May I request you not to give the name of that witness as you answer my questions. Have you taken cognizance of the name of that person? It is highlighted. Est-ce que vous avez vu le nom de cette personne-là? 
have you seen the name of that person? It is highlighted, and um, I would like to thank you in advance for not uh, giving that name in public. Answer? Yes, that person was indeed the district secretary. Council. The ERN of uh, that document in French is 00367-748, or rather 749, Council says. The Khmer ERN 00348842. And it continues on the next page, the e ERN in English, 00351703. And this is what that witness stated. Free translation. I was invited to a meeting once. That meeting was held at Cham Kalu, Kampong Cham province. It was Un, who came from the region, who chaired that meeting. During that meeting, the superior presented a plan regarding the growing of rice, but no plan regarding purges was presented. Upon my arrival in the district, that is Barai district, there was a document containing exclusively instructions regarding the protection of the border and the revolution. There was another document in which the order was issued that the 17 April people be treated on an equal footing and that no distinction should be made between the old people and the new people, end of quote. That was a free translation. My first question is as follows. When you were in Chamkalu, even though you may not have attended a meeting, did you hear of a meeting chaired by UN during which a plan regarding the growing of rice was presented and during which mention was made of a document to the effect that no distinction should be made between the, the 17 April people and the old people. Does this jog your memory? Did you hear of such a meeting or did you attend any meeting that dealt with such a subject? Answer, yes. After I returned from Klochmar, that document had already been drafted. That document essentially requested us to carry out executions to increase rice production and to increase food rations. So it was after I returned from Krochmar that that document was issued. Council, in the French interpretation, I heard uh, that that document invited you to carry out executions. Um, is that a translation problem, or that is indeed what you have stated? Answer, no, that document did not require that we carry out executions. Do I therefore understand uh, that that document indeed invited you not to carry out executions? Is that correct?
Yes, the document asked us to refrain from any further executions. Question, did you see that document with your own eyes? Answer, but during a meeting, Un referred to it, and that meeting was attended by the teachers, and it was said that no further execution should be carried out. I did not read the document, but that subject was broached during that meeting. Council, the question that is put to the witness in that statement E3 slash 5293, same page. The question was asked, did you see this questionnaire? The answer was, I saw that questionnaire. I even learned about it. I don't know where it was from. It was drafted in the form of a book. End of quote, free translation. Did Un tell you what was the provenance of that circular? That is the first question. Uh, when Un talked to you about that circular, did he tell you what was the provenance of that document? Answer according to what he told me, that document was from the upper echelon, perhaps from Office 870. When you say perhaps, does that mean that you do not know? What did he tell you exactly to the best of your recollection? If you do not remember, I am not asking you to invent anything, but if you can recall what terms he used, please tell us exactly what he said. Answer. I do not recall who issued the document. Question. You talked about your duties and responsibilities as the Deputy Secretary of Chamkanlu District as part of your duties and responsibilities, were you also in charge of marriages? Answer, no. Question, as part of your duties and responsibilities, or outside of those duties and responsibilities, did you attend any marriage celebrations? Answer, yes. And do you know who was in charge of organizing such ceremonies? Answer. As a matter of fact, as regards marriage proposals, marriages involved several couples, and it was the respective units involved that made the proposals. Question. The same witness, and if we are still talking of document E3 slash 5293-0036-7751 in French, in Khmer, 0034-8844, and in English, 0035-1705. And this is the question that was put to the witness, free translation. 
who could authorize marriages? And, her, and the witness's answer was as follows. Marriages were decided during meetings between the district and the commune. Marriages were decided according to several criteria. First of all, the age, 18 years minimum for the uh, women. Uh, secondly, love, did they really love themselves? And thirdly, the authorization of the parents, did they really authorize the marriages? End of quote, free translation. Question, as part of the organization of meeting of marriages in the districts or in the commune which you attended, do you recall attending any meetings at which such discussions were held regarding marriages. Again, I'm asking you to tell us what you can remember. And if you don't remember anything, don't invent anything. Answer. I do not recall what was said at those meetings. Council, I would like us to uh, talk about several terms you used. And in the French version I have before me, I am not sure if they are correctly translated. In document E319 slash 19.3.7, the French ERN is 00841972. ERN in Khmer, 00800956. And the ERN in English, 00841967. you talk about arrests that were carried out at Krochmar. And this is what you stated. Free translation. It was therefore communal officials who arrested certain persons and sent them to the district. And then the people at the level of the district would send the files to the officials at the level of the region and the region officials send them to officials at the level of the zone and the regional officials sent the files to the central committee and in Khmer it is the term machun to refer to the center. Can you confirm that uh, machun indeed means center? And to be more specific, according to you, what does the center stand for? Answer. The center was the supreme echelon, that is the highest echelon. Question. During the democratic Kampuchea regime, do you know what the center corresponded to and who were the members of the center or was it just a generic term used at the time? Answer. Paul Pot Nunchia, Ying Suri were members of the center. Question. During the democratic Kampuchea regime, did you meet any of the three persons you have mentioned at any point in time? Answer, no, never. Question, do you know how decisions were taken at the summit, at the center as you refer to it? Do you know how decisions were taken at the center? Mm -hmm. 
answer. I have forgotten everything. It is difficult for me to tell you anything specific. It is impossible for me to express an opinion on that. Uh, Council, I am not asking you to express an opinion. I'm asking you to tell me what you know. A while ago, I asked you whether you attended meetings of the standing committee at the level of the zone, and you said no. And you told my colleague Cooper a number of things, and you said that there was information you did not have in your uh, possession. So. In the same vein, I'm asking you to answer my questions to the best of your knowledge. If you know, you do not know, and if you know something, do tell us. My question is whether you knew what the figure 870 or Office 870 referred to, since you referred to it in your statement. Answer, Office 870 was part of the center or it was the center itself. Question, do you know how many people were members of that office and who exactly represented Office 870 whenever that name came up? Answer, I do not know who were the members of Office 870. Question, is it correct to say that your immediate superior, when you were at the level of the district of Chamkarlo, was the district secretary? Do you know whether that was the person? District Secretary. Answer, my immediate uh, superior was soon District Secretary. Question, is it correct to say that uh, apart from the conversation you referred to, that is a conversation with Sun Sen, regarding your assignment to work with Kepok. Did you not have any other discussions with Son Sen, or did I not properly understand your testimony? Answer, I did not have any discussions with Son Sen. It was the North Zone that had sent me to Rochma. I was sent there by Run and Son Sen. Question, I understood from your statement that you had a direct conversation with Son Sen and you said that during that conversation, he referred to the situation of your brother, uh, saying that you didn't tell the whole truth in your biography and that you didn't have anything to fear and that you had to go back and walk with Kepok. Did I not properly understand your testimony? Answer, yes, that is correct because at the time I had to write a comprehensive <coughs> biography. And that was the second time I had to do so. And uh, that was after my brother was killed. So my brother in his biography uh, had made it clear that he, he had been killed. It was well known that he had been killed, but I did not make mention of his execution. So 
he told me that my brother had been killed. And they told me not to be worried and that I could go and work with KPOC without any problem. And my question, therefore, is whether that conversation with Son Sen was the only conversation you had with him. I spoke with him twice. Um, once um, at a meeting uh, and a second time when I had to produce my biography and then after that meeting he he sold me pointing at me that I had lied he said that my little brother had been eliminated and I just broke down in fear and then he said uh, that I shouldn't be afraid and that I would be able to to go back to work with Cape Book. So if I understood properly during the entire period of uh, DK, those are the two times, the two single times when you met Sun Sen, is that correct? Yes, that is correct. Now I would like to turn uh, to the moment uh, when you were assigned to Krochma. If I understood your testimony properly, you said that this assignment uh, was um, conducted by Eun. Is that true? But yes, that is correct. And, it, and that it is Eun who asked you to change your revolutionary nickname when you arrived in the East Zone, am I correct? Yes. At that time, Eun advised me to uh, have a, a different alias. Earlier, you said, or you told me which alias you used, so, and I don't remember it, so can you tell me which uh, alias you used when you arrived in the uh, East Zone? Initially, I was known as Ho, and in the East Zone, uh, it's changed to Han, Hong Han. Is it under that name that uh, you presented yourself uh, to the people who were under your orders back then? Yes, uh, then he told me that, Comrade Hand, uh, you you are assigned to uh, be in charge of Kochma district. Uh, there were a few of us at the time, so I went. When you said that there were several of us, which other people were also assigned at the same time as you? There were Al and Own, and we were assigned uh, from the uh, central zone, that is from sector uh, 42, the three of us. We went there, and each of us had a messenger. We heard a certain number of witnesses before this chamber who spoke about uh, an arrest wave uh, and uh, also who spoke about uh, the detention of Cham people in Tria. So, did you ever hear 
of an arrest wave of Cham in Trier? And above all, did you order to detain Cham people uh, in Trier? I already testified that after the rebellion, I went for the study session, and after that, I returned. I worked in the work site to gather the people to work in the work site, and then to draft uh, uh, soldiers to go to the front about the field because uh, by that time the situation was in a severe uh, condition and I did not know what uh, about the events that you talk about. Don't. In um, a statement that he made uh, at the hearing of 8 September 2015, Itzen, this is document uh, E1 slash uh, 343.1, a little bit past 11.19 in the morning, confirmed a previous statement in which um, he said that there was a certain Seng, who was a commune chief and the military chief of the commune. Do you remember a person by the name of Seng, who was in the commune in the district, in Krochma district? No, I do not recall that name, and that name does not ring a bell to me anyway. Avant Before speaking about the other Chaman witnesses who testified before this chamber, I would like to seek clarification from you regarding the periods when you arrived in Krochma, you said on several occasions that the situation was chaotic. First, uh, you said that to the international co-prosecutor, and then you said it to my colleague. You said that there had been an incident during which a militiaman had shot uh, your assistant. So my first question, can you tell us what the name was of your deputy who was injured, and then in which exact circumstances was he injured? It was Al. He was the deputy chief of the district. He was a sort of at the Rubio Bank in the afternoon, but I cannot tell you the date that he was shot. As uh, a district chief uh, when you arrived, did, were you in charge of militiamen or of soldiers in the district? No, I wasn't, because at that time there were soldiers working there, and also there were uh, the uh, center army who worked in collaboration uh, with us. And after the uh, rebellion, I was uh, sent for a study session and after I returned, I had to uh, implement the work plan that is uh, agricultural work plan at the work site. 
and the situation at that time was chaotic and we were thinking what we where we go if uh, we were to be defeated whether we were to uh, flee to Thailand or not Donc, si je... So if I understood well when you speak about a chaotic situation you're not only referring to um, the flight of Sao Pim or of Chia Siem towards Vietnam, you're also referring to um, combat, to fighting. Is, am I correct? At that time, uh, a cousin of my wife told me that uh, the situation was uh, rather chaotic and he asked whether I listened to, to the radio or not because the uh, National Salvation Front was formed and that I should be vigilant and that I should not uh, sleep at one place at night time. I believe I understood uh, that uh, among your duties at Krochma, you had to recruit soldiers to go fight at the Vietnamese border. Am I correct? Yes, that is correct. Did you indeed uh, recruit soldiers? And can you tell us, as far as you remember, when in 1977 you did this? In which period of that year? I uh, cannot recall the date. What I remember is that after I returned from the study session, then I, I made a recruitment for soldiers. In, I was uh, instructed by the center to uh, recruit only 100, but I recruited uh, 200 uh, soldiers. Somehow then the uh, center army knew about the, my recruitment and they uh, alerted the center and I was called by the center to answer uh, those uh, questions. Je vais I'm going to read to you again a passage from your statement E3 slash 375 and you're going to tell me if uh, this is what you're referring to indeed, so this is E3 slash 375, French ERN 0036916, um, English ERN 0036754, and Khmer ERN 003607, uh, 348793294 This is what you said We established a plan for each commune to recruit soldiers based on the needs of the higher echelon for example 5 or 10 people per uh, commune then each commune sent me the soldiers that I trained and that I armed I remember then having recruited 200 soldiers, but the higher echelon only asked for 100. End of quote, free translation. So uh, is this the event that you're referring to indeed? Did you indeed recruit 200 soldiers uh, in the different communes of uh, Krochma district? Yes, I had recruited more than a soldiers at that time and they were being trained and they, the, my plan was to recruit up to 200 and the information was heard by the center army and they were concerned that maybe I uh, 
was about to involve in any uh, rebellion. For that reason, I was called by the center to answer those uh, questions. And that's where I was uh, asked about the uh, biography, the bad biography of my uh, relative. And you continue in the same section of your statement and you say these soldiers were to be given to Comrade Run Alassane Krung, who was the head of the special unit. And here again, in French, it was translated as Central Committee, whereas the Khmer word is Machum, the center. And you specify that Sung Kun is right now an advisor to the royal government for An Long Veng. And you say then he had 400 special soldiers for protection, end of quote, part of which was uh, free translation. So this recruitment of soldiers and the organization of protection that you're speaking with, was it linked to the fighting uh, in, uh, with Vietnam or was it linked to something else? To my understanding, there, are, there were two issues. One was uh, to have them prepared to counterattack the Vietnamese at uh, the border or the rebellious activity. And uh, second was to suppress those uh, infiltrated force who have already reached the district level. Vous poursuivez. You continue in your statement again with Sun Sen asked me, what was your purpose of recruiting soldiers? Or do you want to betray? I said, no, I don't. I selected 100 soldiers for the party and kept 100 soldiers to protect the district. Later on, I sent other 100 soldiers to Sung Kung, end of quote. So my question is the following. If I understood properly what you then explain to Sun Sen and what you told us here is that it is you on your own who took the initiative of recruiting more soldiers than what was requested of you by uh, the upper echelon and that the hundred extra soldiers you first assigned them to protect the district. Is that correct? Yes, that is correct. Est-ce que vous Do you know if in other districts uh, in the east zone there were also district leaders who took the initiative of uh, keeping district soldiers aside without that even being requested by the upper echelon? Do you know that? No, I don't. Tout à vous Earlier, you spoke about the fighting at uh, the Vietnamese border. You also spoke about this to my colleague when uh, he uh, quoted a segment uh, from the statement of Cape Pic Van Nat, that is the son of Cape Pok. So do you remember when uh, the fighting uh, began at the Vietnamese border. To my limited knowledge, although it was not that clear, uh, it started with the arrest of a uh, cadre, and after they all had been arrested, and uh, some uh, cadres actually fled uh, to uh, Vietnam. So one uh, went uh, to, uh, or one was defe de defeated to the Vietnamese side while the, the other group actually separated uh, themselves and uh, fled to the jungle.
And how did you obtain that information? Because I was there and I was providing uh, trainings to the soldiers and the these uh, so-called secret force actually herded the people to go into the forest in order to, to go to uh, the Vietnamese territory. And the situation was uh, rather uh, disturbing so we were so concerned about, uh, of our own safety, concerned that the, the, the villagers there would rebel, and concerning about these uh, forces. Did you personally attend or witness the desertion of some soldiers to go who were escaping to Vietnam, who were escaping to join forces in Vietnam. No, I did not witness that. I have. I will find the reference uh, shortly, but. Um, there is a segment in one of your statements uh, during which uh, you, or in which you say that among the 200 soldiers uh, that you had trained, 100 fled. And fought against uh, the Democratic Kampuchea forces. Do you remember saying that? What I meant was that soldiers had to be recruited and trained in Krochma uh, district. However, uh, when I returned, some said, uh, told me that I would not be uh, killed and uh, I should relay that information to other cadres uh, there. And I was let go uh, with my messenger. And for those who didn't have a boat to cross the river, actually they swam across the river. And then the people in Krochma district uh, were evacuated to Chamkalu. I will get back uh, to that when I will find uh, the reference. But for the moment, I would like to turn to a segment uh, in the statement of Kepik Banak. This is document E3 slash 35, which was read out to you by the international co-prosecutor. And uh, I don't know if you remember, but this was a segment uh, in which uh, Kepik uh, is referring to an investigation that was ordered by Pol Pot, uh, to, uh, Pol Pot who ordered his father Kepok following uh, floating bodies in the Mekong so it was an investigation of priori to know what had happened. So my first question is, did you hear about such an inquiry? No, I wasn't. Can you remind us what Kipok's position was when you say that you yourself had seen bodies float in the Mekong. So what was his exact position then? He was 
as chief of the central zone as well as the uh, military commander at the front battlefield with the Sun Sen. And when you were assigned to Krochma, are you sure that you never heard of that kind of investigation? No, I did not. Vous avez un... You said that you had seen bodies on the Mekong, and I believe I understood from your testimony that these bodies were the bodies of soldiers. Do you know on which side they were fighting? I did not. And at one point in time, did you ever speak about this incident uh, to Un or to another uh, leader? Please uh, repeat your question. Yes, I'm asking you if you spoke about this incident, about having seen bodies floating in the Mekong, if you spoke about this to a leader, whether it be a sector leader or whether it be a zone leader. After I, uh, I saw it, then in uh, the meeting, I said that I saw about three or four uh, corpses floating in the river. And allow me to clarify that I didn't hear about the floating corpses from the upper level, but I saw the corpses and I spoke about it uh, in uh, the meeting. And he said, uh, I was told that it was not not a big deal because now the the main concern is about the uh, national situation. And when you say you were told, whom are you speaking about? It was in the uh, the sector, including those heads of the sector, including Ren and other sector chiefs. I didn't, uh, I, I cannot recall the name of the person, but I remember that I was uh, told that I should not bother about that, uh, and the main concern now was, uh, at the time, was about the national situation. I have found, uh, thanks to my team, the segment uh, that I wanted to talk about with you earlier when I was speaking about the 100 soldiers uh, who apparently defected. Uh, this is document E3-375, again, French ERN 00-369-920. Khmer, 00 Three four eight uh, seven nine eight uh, English ERN zero zero three six zero seven five eight. So this is what um, is indicated. One day after I arrived home in Region Forty Two in Krochmar district, a problem occurred. The 100 soldiers trained by me to stand by in this district fled to the jungle to rebel against us. Later on, people in the district were evacuated to sector 42 in the central zone, end of quote. 
So my question is the following. Did you, yes or no, become aware of the fact that a hundred soldiers that you had trained in order to stay in the district had fled and rebelled? Yes, I know it for sure. The soldiers uh, that I uh, prepared, I was told that the soldiers that I prepared uh, actually fled to the uh, forest together with uh, uh, the weapons. And uh, for that reason, the people had to be evacuated to Stung Trong and then to Chum Ka Le. Some said issued an order to Kapo and Un to, uh, for me to go and meet with uh, those people and to make them sure that uh, they should not uh, be worried because I myself was still alive so that I, would, I should go otherwise they would not believe it. Mr. Um, President, I Mr. President, I would like to go into another line of questioning. I don't know whether you'd like us to go on break now. President, yes, it is now time for us to take our afternoon break. We will resume the hearing at 2.45 p.m. Court officer, take the necessary measures to enable the witness to rest properly and bring him back to the court room at 10 minutes to 3 with his duty counsel. <laughs>